my name is Rachel and I'm here today to do the bougie booktuber tag. This was a tag created by a book olive so I will link her channel down below as well as Charles Heathcote who tagged me. Thank you very much for that. This is basically a video about your buying habits. Focus on the amount of money that I spend on books because that will not make me have a quarter life crisis now that I'm 25 or anything. Question number one is what is your average monthly budget for buying books? I don't have one. <laughs> I have a budget for how much money it goes into like my savings or my ISA, things like that. Once that's done, my money's my money, you do you, hun, like I don't care. Usually what happens is if there's a weekend where I don't do anything, I will go and buy myself some books. I'll get them on the internet or I will go to Waterstones after work one day. Whereas if that weekend, like this weekend specifically, I went out on Friday into Manchester, spent quite a lot of money. And so I wouldn't buy any books this week because that's like my expendable income went on me doing something. If next weekend I don't do anything, then my expendable income is left over and I can go and spend it on books like that's how I see it so I don't have a average monthly budget it just kind of is however it ends up going if I had to put a number on it I'd say I spend around 50 pound a month on books minimum and most of the time a lot more than that. Question number two is what is the most you've ever spent in a bookstore? I actually know exactly what this is. <laughs> I came home from Switzerland either for Christmas or my birthday. I think it might have been Christmas last year. I kept coming home and getting books for my birthdays and for Christmas and I couldn't read them because I couldn't take them back to Switzerland with me. I kept having all these books that I would get and I can't read them. So I decided give me the money, whatever you would spend, and I'm gonna go to the bookshop get myself some graphic novels and I will actually be able to read the books that I get for a change because I won't just have to leave them here and go back to Switzerland like I can read them before I go because I read graphic novels quite fast and I enjoy them anyway. So I went to Waterstones. I remember I went to Traveling Man after and spent more money. <laughs> it's like a comic book shop in Manchester but it only says at one time in a bookstore. We're not counting that part of the day. But I remember that I like picked up all the ones that I'd been fancying for a while and I took them to the till and he like did all the stuff and he was like, okay, that's 129 pounds. And I was like, yeah, that, that's fine. And it made me just slightly reevaluate what I was doing and why I was buying. <laughs> So many but also they were my presents that was my Christmas money I can do whatever I want with it it's fine don't have a crisis about it but I know exactly how much it was because I remember at the time being like holy fuck what am I doing <laughs> so that's the most I've ever spent in a bookshop there we go I feel called out again yay question number three are you willing to pay full price for a brand new release or will you wait until you have a coupon or there's a sale I am very very happy to pay full price for a book usually it depends what kind of book it is like I know that the illustrated guide for the new Harry Potter book will be in Asda because it's a very big book release I will go and get it from Asda I don't feel like JK Rowling needs any more money <laughs> like I don't feel the need to give her anything whereas with a lot of books like because I want to go into writing, I've researched a lot about writing, I know about this stuff and I know how little authors actually make and especially when you think about all the things that go into a book, all the graphic designers, copy editors, normal editors, like all the different parts of a book being made. When you look at that, the amount that you pay for a book is hardly anything compared to someone's life's work for a year and then a lot of other people getting involved and making that thing. I do not think books are expensive. So yes, I will pay full price for books, but if I can find them in Asda and they're by someone like JK Rowling, who I feel like is rolling in it, I'm fine getting them from there a little bit cheaper. And I don't mind getting books from charity shops if they're in there. But yeah, I love getting books when they're new releases, so that's fine. Question number four is, would you rather buy one new book or several less expensive used copies? My immediate thought is the several less expensive copies, but it depends what it is. You know, if it's Find Me by Andrew Asman that's coming out at the end of this month, fuck no, I want my new release. <laughs> Whereas like, there aren't a lot of books that I feel like that about, but like when Wayward Son was coming out, the new Snot Girl's coming out, like they're books that I want and I would want them over just getting a few books from the charity shop that 
I kind of like, oh, I kind of want to read this. But most of the time, I would go for the charity shop. I feel like I've just basically said both answers, but it's fine. I let myself off. Question number five. What do you think is a reasonable price for a hardback book, a paperback book, and an e-book book? I don't really like them that go over like $12.99. When you have those like hardbacks that are kind of mini, like the more a paperback size than a hardback size. And £12.99 I'm good with. I have paid more than that because I feel like this one was more expensive. I definitely bought this full price because I went to the sign in for it and I bought it there. Oh this was £12.99. Okay so the bigger ones can be £12.99 too. Yeah £12.99 is definitely okay for me. Any more than that and I start to question it. Like I went into Waterstones yesterday and they had the new Stephen Chavos book the imaginary friend one and I was like oh this is exciting picked it up and it was 20 pounds and I was like oh that's a lot like it makes me reconsider whereas when I pick one up and it's 12.99 I'm like yeah I can spare 12.99 it's basically if there's a one at the front I'm like I can spare that if it's anything like going up to 20 I'm like no no I need I need to think about this <laughs> in terms of paperback I think up to $8.99 is acceptable. $9.99 if they have like a bit of a graphic feel to them um, or they're really, really well published or they're on like, you know, that kind of photo finished paper, then that's okay. But yeah, mostly $8.99 for me. And eBooks, nothing, because I hate eBooks and I'm not fucking buying them, so no. Question number six, is a signed copy worth more to you? How about a first edition? Those are two very different things for me. A signed copy, yes, if I was there. So I've been to a few talks by authors, like I just said, the Yagyasi one. I went to one by Sarah, I'm thinking Sarah Waters, but it wasn't her, the title's own lady, Sarah Moss. And that was amazing. Love having my signed copy from that. I went to uh, Tracy Chevalier, love my signed edition from her. Like if I went and I met that person and I got to listen to them talk for a bit, yes, love a signed copy. If it's just a signed copy like if it's you go in the shop and it's like signed copy by the author don't care i wasn't there it wasn't a memory that i have not bothered if it's signed by them first edition wise yes <laughs> would put a lot of value in a first edition because i collect antique books and i love doing that so obviously yes i would very much love a first edition by the way for me i'm counting first editions as being like before at least the 1950s i don't care about now <laughs> i'm talking about like antique antique books that's what I like. Question number seven is what is your most valuable book? Sentimental or actual value? I don't know if you can see them. They're at the top corner here. I don't know if you can actually see them, but they are basically The Count of Monte Cristo, which is my favorite book of all time. In its original French and it's in a three volume set. This is an antique set as well. My parents got it me when they were in Paris and they went to like some bookshops and stuff and they found it and they got it for me for my birthday or Christmas, I can't remember which. And it's literally like one of the best presents I've ever got. It's French and I love France. Like Paris is my favorite place on earth. It's my favorite book. It's in its original language. It's beautifully published. It's just the best present someone could get me. Like it just shows how much my parents know me that like that's, it's a lot. So it's sentimental, but also probably very valuable. That's definitely my most valuable possession book wise question number eight is will you pay more for a cover or edition of a book you like better yes if it's a book by someone i already like and i've got a lot of their books yes i will pay for the nicer edition if it's a book where it's just like a new author to me and i don't really know much about them then no not bothered someone like john green um i enjoy some john green books don't enjoy others so like I don't care I'd probably just go for the cheapest edition whereas someone like Stephen King I would get the nice edition because I really like Stephen King books it kind of depends who it is question number nine what physical characteristics does a good quality book have the biggest characteristic biggest 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 is that it's not a mass market paperback because I hate them and I can't stand reading them they're too small the writing's too small don't like them, won't read them. Second thing is that the paint doesn't wear away on the spines when you break them. Because I am someone who breaks the spines on books, it doesn't really bother me. So like this, for example, I can't even tell what this book says 
on here because all the paint has worn away when it's bent. I hate it when that happens. Like I want it to be at a quality where that's not gonna happen because that irritates me. I don't buy those books anymore. A beautiful cover for that book specifically. So I mean like tying into the book itself. So for instance, I know I already mentioned it. I'm gonna mention it again. Um, Home Going by Yagyasi. It's set in Africa. The cover's orange. It's got a woman in like traditional dress. We've got all these like plants and nature around it in it. It feels like it really suits the book. And it's it was one, it's like my favorite cover. <laughs> I mention it all the time. But like, it's very well done in terms of like the cover matching the story as well. That's something I really enjoy. Another series that does that really well is knots and crosses this whole series is based around race so everything in terms of the cover design is black and white it's such a good idea so yeah love that question number 10 is if you won the lottery what bookish things would you do with the money the first thing i would do straight away is buy all the expensive graphic novels that i want because graphic novels specifically are things that are so expensive like so 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 expensive i think they are worth the money you have someone right it and also illustrating it illustrating it takes so much longer it's very hard to get graphic novels published so i respect them a lot and i respect how much money they cost however i can't break the bank for <laughs> graphic novels all the time so winning the lottery i would love that what else would i do i would have pop dolls for everything that i like so i would probably have like all the Stephen king ones all of the other game of thrones characters that I don't have unless I don't like them. Like fuck Bran, I'll never get a Bran pop doll. I'd probably get the rest of the Buffy ones. I'd get some Disney ones, things like that. I think there's some Studio Ghibli ones, which if there is like that needs to be my next investment. All the little trinkety things that I like that I don't buy because I feel like they're not as essential, I would buy them all. And then in terms of the big things, obviously I would want a library in my house and I would want a reading chair and reading nooks all over my house love stuff like that the bonus question is to give an image of your dream home library and I don't really have that much of a dream home library image in my head because I wouldn't really mind what it looked like as long as it was full of my books like that's already perfect if that makes sense showing you a picture of a library that isn't mine is not gonna be a dream image for me because it's not gonna be my books I want my books that I've read in there but I can show you pictures of reading nooks because I look at them a lot. Some of the ones that I love the most are when they are under the stairs and there's like a tiny window and they'll have like shelves built into either the stairs themselves or a little shelf on the other side. Love that. Absolutely love it. Also those windowsills but the windowsill really comes out into a kind of couch. Love little areas like that. Like I just want little reading places all over my house. So yeah that's what I'd go for. And there are the questions. So thank Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you to Charles Heathcote very much for tagging me in this video. If you would also like to do this video, please do. Um, I don't know who has done it, but it'd be cool to see Lucy from Books and Brushes do it. Alex from Alex Black, though I think maybe she would have done it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.